Welcome to the lecture Classic Characterization of Immobilized Biocatalyst. My name is Juan Manuel Bolivar and I am professor at the Complutense University of Madrid. In this lecture, we are going to learn about the basic parameters that should be measured and quantified when an enzyme immobilization process and an enzyme immobilized are aimed to be characterized to a basic level. First of all, it's important to define that in the context of this talk, we are going to understand enzyme immobilization as the physical or chemical incorporation of an enzyme within a pre-existing solid carrier material. Once this is defined, we can distinguish about two basic uh, parameters. Parameters that are informing about the extent of the immobilization, so the uh, enzyme immobilization process itself, and parameters that are informing us about the quantity or the quality of the immobilized enzyme. Let's start with uh, the parameters regarding the extent of the enzyme immobilization. When enzyme immobilization experiment is designed, ideally we will need to have uh, access to some basic uh, numbers and variables of our experiment. Variables regarding the initial enzyme suspension, parameters regarding the solid carrier that is used, and parameters regarding the enzyme suspension that we have at the end of the immobilization process. Regarding the initial enzyme suspension, ideally, we will have access to the protein concentration that we have, the amount of acting enzyme that we have, so the so-called enzyme activity, and the volume of the suspension. Regarding the solid carrier material, we would like to have uh, uh, access to the amount in mass of solids is going to be used, and one parameter informing about the volume, so the volume itself, or equivalently, the density of such material. When the immobilization is completed, we would like to have access to information to the liquid where the immobilized enzyme is suspended. This liquid is containing protein and enzyme that is not immobilized. So ideally, we will have access to this protein concentration into the supernatant, to the amount of active enzyme that we have into the supernatant, so it's giving us the information about the enzyme that is not immobilized, and of course, the total volume of this enzyme solid carrier suspension. Once we have uh, access to these parameters informing about the initial enzyme suspension, informing about the amount of solid carrier that we are using, and we have access to the concentration of protein and active enzyme into a supernatant after the immobilization it is completed, we can calculate two basic parameters informing us about the extent, the quantification of the success of the immobilization, that are the protein immobilization yield and the activity immobilization yield. The protein immobilization yield is the ratio between the amount of protein that is immobilized divided by the amount of protein that it was initially present in the immobilization. The amount of protein that is immobilized is given by the protein balance and is just the difference between the amount of protein that it was initially present and the amount of protein that it is remaining in the supernatant, so the one that is not mobilized. The activity balance is calculated in an equivalent manner and it is the ratio between the amount of activity that is immobilized divided by the amount of activity that it was initially present in our enzyme suspension. The amount of activity that is immobilized is calculated by the activity balance, so the difference between the amount of activity that it was initially present in our enzyme suspension and the amount of activity that it is present in the supernatant after the immobilization, so the amount of activity that is not 
im Abilais. Once we can calculate this uh, amount of protein that is immobilized, this amount of activity that is immobilized, we can refer not just to the initially present, but we can refer to the amount of solid material that we have in our immobilization experiment. So if we refer the protein and the activity immobilized to the amount of solid material we have in our experiment, we can calculate two very important parameters informing about the quantity of the sex of the immobilization. One is the protein lodium, and second it is the activity load. The protein lodium is the ratio between the amount of protein that is immobilized by the amount of carry that it was used. So it's giving us a very important information about how much protein is immobilized per unit of mass of the solid we are using. When the activity that is immobilized, it is divided by the amount of solid we are using, we can calculate the activity loading. And it's giving us a very important parameter about the maximum specific activity that we can expect when we use certain amount of mass of the final immobilized enzyme into a solid. All of these parameters that we just uh, uh, discuss were based on protein and activity uh, balance and are based on measurement at the liquid phase before, during or after the immobilization. One step deeper to characterize the immobilized enzyme will be to have direct access to information of the enzyme once it's immobilized and we can divide about three basic parameters. One is the activity, Second will be the kinetics, and third will be the stability of the immobilized enzyme. Let's discuss them. First, the activity. The activity of the immobilized enzyme, it is uh, normally measured by incubating certain known amount of a solid containing the immobilized enzyme, where the protein that is immobilized is also known, with a uh, a liquid suspension containing a known concentration of the substrate. The reaction is normally monitored either following the decrease of the substrate concentration over time or alternatively following the formation of the product over time. To calculate the activity, we are interested in the initial reaction rate, and normally this uh, reaction rate it is a volumetric activity, so it is a measurement of uh, how much enzyme activity it is in the volume of our experiment. If we want to uh, refer this uh, information to the amount of enzyme that we have or to the amount of solid that we have, we can calculate two important parameters. One, it is the observable activity, and second, it is the specific activity of the mobilized enzyme. The observable activity is the result of referring the volumetric reaction rate to the amount of solid catalyst that we have. And it's giving us information about the real observed activity of a solid catalyst under the reaction conditions. If this observable activity it is referred not to the amount of solid carrier, but to the amount of protein, for that, we need to know the previously defined protein loading. What we will have access will be to the specific activity of the immobilized enzyme that, of course, could be compared with the specific activity of the free enzyme. If we compare the activity of the immobilized uh, uh, enzyme to a maximum that we could expect, we can define two parameters that uh, give us some very important information about the quality of our immobilization. One, it is the recovery activity, and the second, it is the express activity. The recovery activity, it is the ratio between the real observed activity of the immobilized enzyme under well-defined reaction condition divided by the maximum we, we could expect. And the maximum we could expect, it is based on the activity offered 
So it is based on the quantification of the active enzyme that it was initially present at the beginning of the immobilization. Of course, this parameter of recovery activity is informing us about two things simultaneously. One, it is about the yield of immobilization, and second, it is about the quality of the immobilization. On the contrary, the space activity is informing only about the quality of the immobilization because it is calculated by dividing the observable activity by the amount of immobilized activity. As this concept of immobilized activity given by the activity loading is only considering the active uh, enzyme that we should have into the solid, this parameter is informing uniquely about the quality of the immobilization. Let's uh, pay more detailed attention about the way that we can uh, define and observe this quality of immobilization. Normally, in a immobilized enzyme, the maximum reference of the performance it is the free enzyme. So, if we measure the activity given by certain amount of the immobilized enzyme, and we compare this activity reaction rate with the a reaction rate given by the same amount of the free enzyme, we can calculate uh, a, a ratio that is known in biocatalysis as the effectiveness factor. This effectiveness factor, it is comparing how active is the mobilized enzyme compared with the maximum, considering the maximum the behavior of the enzyme when it's not immobilized. Once we have uh, discussed uh, the concept of activities and different parameters informing about that, let's uh, uh, now take a look to the concept of kinetics. In the kinetics, what we are interested in it is to know the reaction rate given by certain amount of the mobilized enzyme depending on the substrate concentration that we have. This uh, dependency between the activity and the substrate uh, uh, concentration can be plotted and can be modeled by a kinetic equation and calculate constant that are giving us a more concrete and detailed information about the quality and the characteristic of our immobilized asset. Finally, the third very important source of information when we characterize immobilized enzyme, it is stability. How it is normally done, it is incubating certain amount of the mobilized enzyme under well-defined conditions. Samples of the suspension are taken and submitted to enzymatic assay to calculate the activity over time. If the mobilized enzyme is very unstable, what we will observe, it is a quick decrease of the activity over time. On the contrary, if the immobilized enzyme it is very stable, so the enzyme immobilization process contributed to a stabilization of the enzyme, what we will observe ideally is a conservation of the enzyme activity over time. With this, we just uh, went through basic parameters that should be measured to have a basic characterization of the immobilized oh. enzyme. In other lectures, we will see a more advanced characterization of the mobilized enzyme that could have access to hidden and overlying parameters regarding this observable behavior.